Once you've accomplished uh, the, a nice black and white value painting, then you want to paint your painting with color from that vac black and white value painting. You don't want to take this painting and just slip it under the table. Keep it out where you can refer to it because you want your colored painting to be as strong and as good as your black and white value painting. And so now I'm going to tell you about the colors that I'm going to be using in this painting. And I'm going to use Aurelian and Cranacridone Gold. One is warm, one is cool. And Cranacridone Gold is a tertiary color because it has all three primaries in it, yellow, red, and blue. And yellow is a primary color. Then I'm using Permanent Rose, which is a cool red, and it has a little bit of blue in it. And then I'm using Ultramarine Blue, which is a color that has just a tiny touch of red in it. And so I have a four color palette, two yellows, one red, one blue. So let's get started and see how this painting goes now in color. I'm going to repeat the same thing again by marking my centers with pencil. Um, just putting some nice dots there so that I can remember where the centers are. And keeping in mind where I want my center of interest to be, going from corner to corner and corner to center. And I know that I want that darkest area right down in there to be the focal point. And so there's no pencil on this. It's, again, it's just direct paint with no drawing. And I'm going to start off with Cornacodone Gold. And I'm going to go right up in here and begin that shape that I see. Swing down just a little bit and introduce it just a little bit taller up in here. And then come across. I want to leave enough space there to be able to um, include the trees on the edge. And come down. I'm going to find the roof shape as it comes across the top. And, and I'm using a permanent rose with just a little bit of cornacridone gold introduced into it. And you'll see me keep going back into these colors. Now I've introduced a little bit of permanent rose again with a little cornacridone gold in it so I can excite the color. I want this the color to be excited. I don't want to just put just one flat color down. Introduce just a little bit of blue into that and look how gray that turned when I did that. That's fun when that happens. It creates a nice color. I can even put a little bit more blue into it if I want to get it. If it's too much blue then I'll just go back and introduce a little bit of red and that changes the color again. Every time you introduce one color on top of another color it gives you a totally different um, color. And once two, one yellow, one red, one blue mixed together, then you create gray, some form of gray or tertiary color. And tertiary is all three primaries mixed together or two secondaries or two complements will do the same thing. I'm down and we're going to introduce more yellow into this, cornacridone gold. Bring it right on down. And I want to find where the little um, wall area is. I'm going to change my color and cite the color by introducing just a little bit of red into it. Come across and I want a nice orangey color so I'm going to take yellow and introduce red into it and get a nice orange. And I'm going to bring that orange right across here and instead of drawing it sh straight across I want to just make a nice interesting shape there rather than just straight. Kind of makes it more fun if it's not so static. Looking at the value study to make sure I understand where everything goes. And a few little fun little shapes down here, shadow shapes. And while that's setting up for just a little bit, I'm going to go over on the other side and I'm going to take Cornacridone Gold and Ultramarine Blue and make a nice grayed down green and come next to the building and introduce some nice little tree shapes. So if you put something down and it's too dark, just go back and add more water to your pigment and go right back into it. I'm going to introduce a little bit of orangey color over here just for the fun of it and find the edge of this building, the outside edge. Just having fun with it and putting a few little shapes in. And then I'm going to uh, introduce a little bit of darks at the bottom. I'm using just a little bit of ultramarine blue, permanent rose, and cornacridone gold to give me a dark value. Pushing it almost to black but not quite and introduce a little bit of that down in here. And I'm going to take some of that dark color and begin to work back into the building with it. A few little pieces of darks here and there, across here for the fun of it. A little bit of dark there. And I definitely want to get this door dark. So I've added a little bit more blue to that mixture. And going corner to corner and corner to center, right in here is where I want that door to go. And because I understand the ratio of water to pigment, how much water, how much pigment, I can put that paint right on top of that wet surface and it is very wet there right now but the paint's not going anywhere it's staying there and add a few little fun pieces in here that I didn't have in the um, value painting 
and I'm about ready now to go back into the um, first part of the building that I painted and introduce some little windows and so forth in there. So I'm introducing a little dark red shape, but note that the windows are not exactly the same size and clean my brush out and pick up just a little bit of blue and maybe introduce a little bit of pretty blue color up in there also. Just a pop of that makes it darker. And then I find it would like to put another window down in here. Another window, maybe I can push that just a tad darker. Put some little shutters on each side of it just to change the look of it. I need to come down in the front and introduce the greenish colors down here for the little shrubs and little red flowers that will be there. And I also need to put the road in or a little path that leads up to the door. Put a few little more uh, colors there for the trees. And this entire painting has been done with this one brush, which is the uh, one inch Angler 7400 that I like so much. It's one of my favorite brushes. I use it for just about everything. I do use other brushes, but this is one that I use the most. Let's go up in here and introduce some little windows. Don't want them all to be the same. Don't want them to be the same base. So I'm going to go back with a little bit of a damp brush and lift some of the colors out. Just I don't want this to compete with this down here, so I'll try to play this down, but I do want some windows there. Changing the colors, changing the um, the shape so they're not all just exactly the same. And maybe a few more little darks over here. And I feel like I need just a little bit more cool color on this side and maybe just to change this just a little bit. So I'll introduce just a little more change there. Maybe a little more calligraphy work over here. Maybe some little red flowers here by this door to kind of help get your eye over to that section. And we need to introduce our little walkway, which will be kind of fun to have that in there. I'm going to add just a little bit more red into this painting, just to pop it just a little bit more, especially right up in this area. Just a little bit more warm color up in there. Maybe a little bit down in here. And just a tiny little bit of a change of color on the flowers. Maybe add a little orange in there just to give us a little variety for that. And then I want to talk about one more thing uh, about edges, how to lose edges. I use a toothbrush. I'm going to take this toothbrush and just straddle the white paper and color. And I just want to soften some of these edges out so it doesn't look like it's been cut out and pasted the paper. And just take the paper towel and just softly lose an edge. And it's you kind of have to... Um, determine where you want to lose the edges. There's no exact place to do this. It's just looking at it and making a decision about where you want it to happen. And But it does make a difference in how the painting looks. It softens it down and uh, gives it a nice look. And just do just a little bit of this in a few places and then we'll call it finished. Maybe just a little bit right in there. We'll step back and take a look at it. And on this wall, maybe just a little bit of a lost edge here. And a little bit on these windows over here just to calm them down just a little bit and lose some edges. Okay, I think that'll be finished. And hope you enjoyed this and learned a lot from the linkage and the color mixing.